Hey friends, welcome to the first ever hot news in our brand new office. We are super excited. We're moving into a place that's probably about five to six times bigger than the last office that we had. And we have a moving vlog coming up to showcase just exactly what uh, the situation is gonna be here. So if you guys are at all interested in that, subscribe and wait for the video probably tomorrow or Sunday. Um, and I do wanna address the stuff that I talked about in yesterday's video regarding the South African parliament passing a bill that could potentially be devastating for our channel. And then like the fact that we're moving Moving into a new office. I signed the lease before they signed the bill. Things could get bad. So like this is not a sign of the fact that the future might go peachy and rosy. It was, uh, we're, we're kind of hoping that everything's going to turn out all right, but it could mean that I have a lease that I can't afford. So uh, we'll just see how things go, you know, like let's just, uh, or I could be in jail <laughs> one way or the other with the, with the new law. So that that is a possibility. But let's get into today's hot news. There's no sponsor on today's video. Just a normal, hey, we're in a new office. Let's talk. So let's talk about the fact that Apple continuously just sucks at making keyboards. Initially, they touted their uh, butterfly keys on the latest MacBooks as being something that was ingenuitive and amazing. And the fact that it could be so low profile because look at how thin they need to make these things. And it just, it just works. But gosh dang it, no it doesn't. And the failure rates have been quite high, at least anecdotally. There's been plenty of reports on the internet about how keys just stop working due to the fact that dirt just gets right under the keys and they even updated the keyboard to have like a little rubber gasket that prevents the dirt from actually stopping the keys from working but it appears that that is still not good enough there's been articles coming out from the Wall Street Journal as well as Ars Technica talking about how at least anecdotally even on the latest MacBooks the keyboards are still failing them and they were actually able to get a comment from Apple themselves saying we are aware that a <clears throat> small number of users are having issues with the third generation butterfly keyboard and for that we are sorry that's i mean that's a huge step of maturity for apple to apologize the vast majority of mac notebook customers are having a positive experience with the new keyboard gosh dang it you know a 25 percent failure rate still means the vast majority of people are enjoying it Okay, like this, that's, that doesn't mean bull crap. That, the, the fact that they're apologizing, one, shows that the Steve Jobs era is completely over at Apple. And then two, the fact that there might actually be something to the fact that uh, the butterfly keyboard just flat out sucks. And uh, if you're on a MacBook, just watch out for it. If you have the butterfly keys, you just just make sure you get Apple Care when you buy the thing. So that way, when you go in to have it repaired, you only get hassled by the people at the Genius Bar, not hassled with the fact that you might have to pay for it. Or, you know, you could just like order iFixit tools and then try to fix it. Although Apple does their best to make it unrepairable. And they also are trying to squash your ability to repair it or to take it to somebody who's not an approved Apple repair center. Apple screw you. <laughs> That's what I have to say when it comes to this kind of stuff. Not only are you making a crappy product, but you're also making it impossible for people to fix. And then you're going to charge people an arm and a butt to make sure that they are have, able to have a keyboard that works on a laptop, which is supposed to have a functional keyboard. Screw you, Apple. But... I want the Apple card. Now, before <laughs> before anybody uh, starts calling me out for it, there, there are a couple of things that actually, at least for my personal situation, this would be amazing. One, the fact that the physical card has no numbers on it, and two, there are no foreign transaction fees. At me, as, a, as an American living in South Africa, where one, card theft is quite high, and then two, I'm buying things in a foreign land and I, I'm always converting currency, like that is a perfect thing. If my card gets stolen, there's no issues. Nobody's stealing my card. Nobody's gonna be able to use it. And then also, I don't have to pay for the fact that I'm living in a foreign country. So I just, I want an Apple card. For those reasons only, obviously I would be a smart consumer, make sure that I pay off my bill every month so that I'm getting the cash back reward and not getting, not paying Apple any interest and thereby not supporting their business model and screwing them over by getting the cash back that they offer. Sticking it to them for my own convenience. 
Anyways, so that's enough of Apple's shenanigans. Let's go ahead and talk about Huawei and their MateBook, uh, which has been discovered to have a backdoor security flaw in it through one of the drivers that it has, giving low-level access to things that really shouldn't be there. This was discovered by Microsoft, and apparently when they pointed it out to Huawei, they immediately patched it. However, with the discussion that's been surrounding Huawei being a um, entity or at least a partner of the Chinese government to have some sort of insight to the American populace and using their devices to spy on people. This does not bode well. The fact that they patched it is great, but there could be other things that have not yet been discovered uh, that could be there, which makes me really sad because I really love the Matebooks. They look so sexy. The Matebook X Pro, whichever one just got refreshed. Oh my goodness, I want one. But I mean, I live in South Africa. They sell my data to the Chinese anyway. But I mean, I guess I will protect my security instead by going with a Wootware Woot book. That's right. Wootware is going to take my data. I'm okay with that. And then in case you wanted to use your body for anything more than just, you know, being a living human person, apparently scientists have found a way to encode DNA with data. Now, this isn't necessarily novel. It's been done in the past. However, one of the biggest issues is that it's not an automated process. You can't read and write data to DNA in an automated way. However, there are researchers who have published that they have been able to do that up to five bytes, I believe it was. They were able to encode a five byte message into DNA, which uh, through new methods that allow it to be more autonomous than it was previously, which could mean that we can start. Oh, no, this is bad. This is the new world order. I'm done with this one. We got the Matebook drivers. We got DNA being encoded for nefarious purposes. Let's talk about Google Stadia because that's a great segue. They've revealed bandwidth requirements for their streaming service for 1080p at 60 FPS. You're looking at 25 megabits per second, which is not terrible. However, streaming 4K is supposed to only be 30 megabits per second, which is a little weird. It's a little weird. Maybe it's, it's probably definitely not 4K 60, but I mean, how do you go from 1080 60 to at 25 to 4K at 30 when 4K is four times the resolution. And then if you just half the frame rate, you're still doubling what you need. This doesn't make any sense unless there's a lot of overhead that's going to not actually streaming the frames of the video game and it's used for some other API nonsense that I'm not sure of. So uh, yeah. I mean, it makes sense for people who live in like actual urban areas that have decent internet connections. This is not meant to replace people out in the middle of the nowhere who have consoles. This is not gonna be a console killer for those people like me in South Africa. And then let's talk about a really cool SSD that uh, Galax just unveiled. It's a, an NVMe drive, which I mean, there's nothing special about it besides the fact that it has a giant heat sink with a heat pipe in it. That's pretty dope. It makes me excited. You know what else makes me excited? Intel and Micron getting a divorce. I don't know what that was. Anyways, so there's been a split between Intel and Micron who had worked together to develop 3D crosspoint technology, which is used in their Optane drives. They were having an amicable split where they were gonna go their separate ways. They both benefited from the program and Intel was gonna develop Optane drives and Micron was gonna develop some other 3D crosspoint drives, whatever it was gonna be. But it looks like Intel's whipping out the lawyers and just being like, give us back all of our intellectual property right now. And we'll just see where this goes. Intel chopping out the, the legalese to make sure that Micron complies. It's fisticuffs. Let's go. And then if you live in the UK, NVIDIA is actually having a price cut right now on their RTX cards. We'll leave a link in the video description for anybody who's interested in picking up an RTX card. It looks like everything from the 2060 to the 2080 Ti is on sale. It's not a permanent price cut, but it is significant. Like 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio was about 1,290 pounds. Now it's 1,200 pounds, which I mean, if you can save 90 pounds, save 90 pounds. If I did, I'd be a stick. There's a weight joke. And then there is a rumor that's floating out there from Red Gaming Tech regarding Navi 20 GPUs potentially being faster than a 2080 Ti and having ray tracing. I, I can leave all of the source for you guys to check it out, but it's a rumor. AMD has always disappointed me in the GPU department. I mean, freaking Radeon 7 sitting right there. I'll spend the money on the card, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. 
And uh, I'm not necessarily gonna jump on the bandwagon for this. It's just, it seems too good to be true. And as far as everything that has ever come out about AMD GPUs, too good to be true means holy crap, yes it is. And what we're gonna get is a Vega replacement that's uh, about what Vega was. Anyways, AMD is also throwing out the salt, releasing a white paper talking about how people can avoid the Intel tax with their new Epic CPUs, with the Intel tax just being you're paying more for, for less. So stop doing that, Intel. And then Sony CEO and current chairman Kaz Harai has announced his retirement. This is coming in the wake of the fact that his parody Twitter account has also announced his retirement late last year. And now it's official that both of them are gone. Sad. You know what's not gone though? Borderlands. Borderlands 3 was announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're expecting more details on April 3rd regarding potentially what the release date's gonna look like, but get excited, friends. And if you own the older Borderlands, Borderlands Game of the Year Edition will be a free upgrade to all PC owners, including, uh, what is it, 4K up, up textures? So free DLC, good guy Gearbox. And then good guy XSplit for finally putting in the new NVENC encoder to the uh, streaming software when OBS already had that. Well done. And then bad guy Office Depot getting fined $25 million for bogus virus scans. Holy crap, they were charging your grandma an arm and a leg to get her computer service. And it turns out they were basically doing nothing. They were using a software called PC Health Checked, which did crap all. And then, uh, you know, charging people for Office Depot, you suck. Go away. You should, you should not exist as a company anymore. You and Office Max, bye bye. Never heard of Office Max. You wouldn't know. They're the same thing. Office Max and Office Depot and Staples are all the same. They're just out of get, uh, touch retailers who were replaced by Amazon. But Hyperlife Drifter is being replaced with an animated series. And by replaced, I mean supplemented. And by that, I mean moving on to the next story of Amazon's Twitch Prime now includes a year of Nintendo Switch Online. So uh, boogity boogity, you're getting a lot of cool, what was that? You're getting a lot of free stuff with Twitch Prime. Not only can you pay creators on Twitch, such as myself, if you guys have Amazon Prime and you go over to Twitch and you subscribe to us for free, we get a cut of that. We get, we get paid for your Twitch Prime subscription. So if you guys would at, want to do that, you can do that, link in the video description, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. But anyways, if you don't wanna do that or if you give me a Twitch Prime subscription to somebody else, you now get Nintendo Switch Online if you have a Switch. And then finally, the bit of news that I've waited all my life for. At last, mystery of Garfield Phone Beach solved after 35 years. Oh my, for 35 years, a French coastal community has been haunted by the ghost of the world's most iconic novelty telephone. It was washed ashore, and puzzling local and irking environmental locals. What the heck is this story? Oh my gosh. Anyways, these Garfield phones had been washing up on the shore of this French beach, and it turns out they finally discovered that there was a shipping container that apparently ran into uh, some rocks in a cave, and the phones just keep washing ashore. So fantastic. Garfield phones, best news story today. Anyways, don't forget that that's the end of hot news. How could you forget? Because I just told you. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. If you want to give us your Twitch Prime subscription, you can do so over at twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. If you want to support us directly and I don't know, potentially help us fund whatever we have to do if the South African government comes after us, patreon.com forward slash UFD Tech. And then, uh, yeah, no ads today, but we love you so much. Moving vlog soon. See you in the next video. Love you too. Bye.